Well, hello and welcome to this week's edition of Good Day MCI. I'm Devron Wilson. My good friend and co-host Carol Smith is out on assignment. MCI, can you believe it's already the month of March? <laughs> Where's the time gone? But you know the old saying goes, time flies when you're having fun. And we've been having a blast here at Good Day MCI. And we've got a lot happening here in the ministry in the month of March. Take a look. We are so excited as we anticipate the masses for Youth Registration Day for all ages. It will take place on Sunday, March 13th after the 10th. 30 a.m. worship experience. We are re-engaging our youth to advance the kingdom for ages to come. Parents, please make every effort to sign your youth up and assist with getting them involved. Partner Sunday, March 26th, is declared as Intentional Honor Sunday as we honor our apostle and senior pastor of 21 years of leadership. Each Sunday in March, there will be an Intentional Honor moment of expression as we move toward the special day with excitement. Remember, honor has a reward installed inside of it, reserved for us as we practice it. Let's pay homage to our apostle. MCI, here's a friendly reminder that Word Up Wednesday Bible study is a midweek time of refueling our spirits with the Word of God. Make Word Up Wednesdays your weekly fuel stops at 12 noon and or 7 o'clock p.m. Family, stop by our very own in-house cafe, Nehemiah Cup, to refresh your natural man before or after services without having to go anywhere else. The cafe is open on Sundays at 7 o'clock a.m. between services and 45 minutes after the 10.30 a.m. service. Stop by the cafe this Sunday. Attending Sunday school is a great way to strengthen your knowledge of biblical doctrine and understanding here at MCI. Sunday school is offered weekly in person on Sundays at 9.15 a.m. and Monday evenings virtually at 6.30 p.m. Join one of these exciting classes for biblical enrichment. Attention family, as you are filling out your unified offering envelopes, we ask that you please print legibly so that we may properly log and document your seeds to your member profile in our giving system. Hey, have you heard the latest news at MCI? To stay abreast of all things MCI, please take out your phones right now and text the word Mount Calvary to the number 54244 to sign up for Text Blast so that you can stay connected. Thank you in advance for being a part of our mobile community. Well, now you're all caught up and in the know. Save the Date, set your reminders and meet the family right here for all of our monthly scheduled events. For any additional news and or updates, check out our website and all of our social media outlets. On behalf of Apostle Terry Gulich, elect Lady Cassandra Gulich and all of us here at Good Day MCI. Enjoy the remainder of your day and let's make it a great Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God. Let us come together in agreement. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day, Lord God. The day that you have made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it, Father. God, we honor you, we exalt you, and we magnify your name, O oh God. God, we implore your presence, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come in and have your way, Holy Spirit. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for your guidance, Lord God. God, we thank you, Father God, for this day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have allowed us to come together, Lord God, on one accord, oh God, to bless and worship and praise your holy name, oh God. God, we bless your name, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you've kept us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father God, that you provided for, the, for us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And you protect us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, for you are awesome, oh God. You're wonderful, oh God. Oh God, you are blessed, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name, oh God. God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your presence, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for your word, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that is a left off feet and a light town path in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, as we go forward, Father God, for your word, oh God, we pray that your word, Father God, work do the, do the convict, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that your word will draw, Lord God, someone who do not know you in the pardon of their sins, Lord God, that they may come saying, what must I do to be saved? Oh God, we thank you for salvation, Lord God. God, we thank you that you're married to the backslide, oh God. God, we thank you, Lord God, that your word, your word, oh God, your word, Father God, is, is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, oh God. Your word, oh God, is what we should remember, Lord. We thank you for your wisdom and knowledge, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, we honor you, Father.
Father God. We bless your name, oh God. We glorify you. Be thy glorified in service, oh God. Be thy glorified in our lives, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we come against anything and everything that's not of you, oh God. We bind, oh God, any disagreements, oh God, conversations, oh God. Negative, negativity, Father. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood, the blood of Jesus, Lord God. The blood of Jesus, oh God. And we thank you, Father God, for the blood, oh God. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on Calvary. And Father, as we come to your table today, Lord God, we, Father God, we ask you, Lord God, that we will examine ourselves, oh God, and that we, you will forgive us, Lord God. Sins of omission and commission, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And we thank you for your forgiveness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We bless your name and we honor you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. It is in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on and stand to your feet as we welcome in the presence of God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we bless you. God, we praise you. God, we give you the glory. Come on, and with the fruit of your lips, come on and talk to God. God, we thank you for getting us here this morning. God, you reign, you rule, God. We put you first in our lives. God, you deserve the glory and you deserve the honor. And for that, we say thank you. Somebody say thank you. We love you, God. And you can clap your hands right here. Right here, say, My God, rain, my God, rain, I got rain, I got rain, Lord, you rain above.
for God to reign is that he's royalty. Somebody say he's royalty. He's supreme. He's magnificent. He's above everything. That means we should put him first. The way we show God that he reigns in our life is to totally surrender. Somebody say totally surrender. That means not your will, but his will. So right here in this moment, you can lift your hands and close your eyes. Don't worry about who's around you. And say, God, you can reign in my life. God, I put you first in my life. As soon as you wake up in the morning, with that first breath, you should tell God, thank you. And if you forgot, you should tell him right now, say thank you. Because he woke you up this morning. Not only did you wake up, you was able to get out of the bed. That's another reason to tell God, thank you. Some people woke up and couldn't get out of the bed. Not only did you just get out the bed, but you were able to walk. Tell God, thank you. Even if you had to use a cane or a walker, you were able to move. Tell God, thank you. Right now, you're able to lift up your hands. Tell God, thank you. You have the activity of your limbs. We can't forget about the little things. Say, God, you reign. We praise you, King of glory. We praise you, Prince of Peace. We lift our hands to heaven and praise your name. Oh, we praise. King of heaven, we praise you, Lord of earth. We lift our voice to heaven and praise your. Praise you. 
you, Lord of earth. We praise you, oh. Lord of earth. We lift our voice to heaven. We lift our voice to heaven. And praise your name. Yes, 
you are can I hear you sing it you are you are you are you are yes you are say you are holy holy Lord you are lift your hands and say it you are Worthy, worthy, yes you are, yeah you are, you are, you are, yes you are, you are. This is your turn to fill in the blank. You are, you are, yes you are. God, we come to you right now humbly as we know how, God. Here to surrender our all to you, God. Empty us out. Anything that's not like you, God, take it away and fill us with you. We want to be filled with your Holy Spirit. We want to be more like you, God. And we're here to declare this morning, God, that you reign. You reign over our lives, God. You reign over our families and our money, God. And we put you first because you first loved us, God. You died for us way back on Calvary, knowing that we were sent over and over again, knowing that we will forget to pray, God, knowing that we will forget to put you first, knowing we could go the whole day without telling you thank you. But right now, God, we say thank you. We thank you for our breath, God. And God, we thank you for just who you are. We thank you for what you've already done for us, God. Over the years, you've kept us over and over again. Even when we forget you, you don't forget us. And for that, we say thank you for your unfailing love that catches us wherever we run away, God. You continue to chase us. You continue to pursue us, God. So we turn back to you, God, and say, God, you reign. God, you rule. And for God, we will live. And for God, we will die, God. God, we don't take for granted what you did on Calvary. We don't take for granted that you gave up your life for a group of people that may forget to pray, God. So right now, we lift our hands, God, and we say, we surrender our all to you, God. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. And we receive everything that you have for us. And we will obey in Jesus' name. Somebody clap your hands and say amen. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'll never forget what he's done. You can be seated right where you are. We're going to continue to talk about the goodness of God and what he's done for us. He died for us. He rose for us. And today he lives. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because of his blood, we are healed. Because of the stripes he took on his back, we're able to be healed. So in this moment, you can just close your eyes and meditate on God. As today we will take communion. And we want to remember the purpose of communion, not the process. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won. You're seated in majesty. You are the risen King. Say hallelujah.
say death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you down. No, it couldn't, cause you are the risen king. You are the risen king. You rose up with all power and you seated in seated majesty. In majesty. You are the risen king. Say hallelujah. hallelujah, you have won, yeah, you have won the victory, hallelujah. hallelujah, you have won it all, you have won for me, all. for me, say death could not hold, death could not hold. Death could 
Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you today as we give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. Because you're worthy in our lives. And, Father, we are grateful that we consider the fact that even, Father, when death tried to hold you hostage, you rose in victory. And for that, we want to say thank you. So Lord, we count it a privilege and we thank you for the opportunity to be together in worship today. Thank you, Father, for those of us that are in person, those of us who are virtual today. But we are here today to make one sound and that is the sound that you are worthy and you have given us the victory. So Father, we collectively just wanna say thank you for being better to us than we've even been to our own selves. And today we give you praise, glory, and honor because you are worthy in our lives. Father, we are grateful because when we consider ourselves, oh, Father, right now, Lord, when we realize, Lord, that you have uh, done so much for us, we must be honest, Lord, that we don't always feel deserving. But because of your compassion that fails not and your mercies are new every day, we are thankful for your great faithfulness that's demonstrated toward us. And so we bless you, we honor you, and we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to give you what you deserve. All the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you for this word we're about to receive now in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody, clap your hands and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know him for yourself as the risen king, come on, give him a hallelujah. Come on, come on. You got to have your own hallelujah. You can't let the praise team have your hallelujah. You can't let me have your hallelujah. You've got to have your own hallelujah. You did it all for me. You did it all for me. You did it all for me. And you are the risen king. We bless you and we honor you. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, great is our God and greatly to be praised. And certainly we are thankful for the privilege and the opportunity to be together again in worship. Amen. We're grateful for all of you who are in person today that you found it. Amen. Necessary. And you made it your way to the house of the Lord. For the Bible says to forsake not the assembling ourselves together as is the manner of some. And so we're grateful for each and every one of you. And can you join me right now? Can you just go on and praise God for the person next to you right now? Hallelujah. Let's not we take for granted our being here because there's somebody that would love to be in the chair, would love to be in person, would love to be right here. And it's not because any of us are better than anybody else. And some of them this morning that by reason of a good conscience cannot make it to the house of the Lord, but you are joining us virtually today. And we don't take your presence in worship, amen, for granted. Because we understand that the Lord is the Lord of the house, amen. When the Lord is the Lord of the house, it's there that you can find yourself in the house of the Lord. So family in person, can you help me welcome and thank God for all of our vir virtual worshipers. Come on, let's give God praise for them. Amen. 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 Listen, amen. We don't take anything for granted here because, amen, God uh, has given us these tools to be able to reach the masses and to be able to share with those that cannot by reason of a good conscience be here. Well, today is a special day because number one, it is the day that the Lord has made. But uh, here we are, you all. Uh, it looked like it was two weeks ago that we were saying thank you, Lord, for another year. And today, amen, we are already in the third month of this year, allowing us to see that time waits for no one. Amen. And we must make the most of our time. The Bible says we got to redeem the time. Amen, because the days are evil. That simply means makes the most of every day and make every day count with the Lord because time will not wait for us and when we walk with the Lord. 
as you see before us today, even this morning, the table of the Lord that has been set. And of course, on today, we will pause to eat of the bread and drink of the cup uh, of the Lord on today. And I'm going to share a word right around that because uh, this is what God told me to share today. It won't be our traditional sermon format, but it will definitely, amen, be impactful because whenever God sends a word, he sends it on purpose. Amen. So with that being said, amen, we're grateful for all of you and certainly thankful for Pastor and Co-Pastor Murray today. Amen. Let's thank God for the man and woman of God. We thank God for you. Amen. And this, amen. This is home for them and we're grateful for them and for all of you, my father's children, we're grateful for you today. If you're able right now, um, grab your Bibles, amen, and get on your feet as we will read two portions of scripture. And uh, this message today is going to be more of a word uh, concerning, amen, this particular day. Everyone standing, even if you don't have a Bible, stand with us anyway, amen. The word will be put on the screen for you. We're reading this morning from the New International Version of the Bible. The NIV is where our uh, scripture is coming from today. But if you're reading another translation, just follow along. It's going to equal the same thing. Exodus chapter, we're going to read from two portions of scripture. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 12, verses 12 through 14. And then we're going to flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 25. And then we will hear what the Lord will say to us. Amen. Anybody ready for the Lord to speak? Anybody ready for the Lord to speak? Come on, look up toward heaven's way and just ask him to speak, Lord. Amen. I believe he's going to do just that in this room. Amen. Exodus chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. The New International Version reads this way. The NIV says, On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are, you, you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Now turn with me to the New, pa New Testament passage, and that is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 23 through 25 reads this way. Paul says this, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me such is the word of the lord the word of the lord can be is blessed the word of the lord can be trusted as you take your seats just for a few minutes i need you to give god your undivided attention as we would uh, take these two verses and have our little discussion as we get ready to take communion on today i want to talk about detailed instructions Everyone say with me, say detail, detail. Instructions. instructions. Please know an instruction is a direct command of what one needs to do for a specific reason or purpose. An instruction does not have to qualify itself in the beginning, but it will prove itself over time. Detailed instruction is one that um, has attached to it a procedural order that requires attentiveness to every step of the process for beneficial results. When we consider the Lord's Supper and Holy Communion, there's something that Jesus said, according to what's written in Luke chapter 22, when Jesus there on the course of Feast of Passover gathered with his disciples in an upper room. And when he took the bread and he took the cup and he explained the elements and he told them as they would eat of the bread and drink of the cup. That's what Paul is referring to here in our uh, first Corinthians reading. He says, whenever you do it, do this in remembrance of me. Yeah. Jesus now calls us to remember. And it's important that we understand that there's great impact in remembering. 
when Jesus calls us to remember and to do and take communion in remembrance of him, we have to be careful that we do not lean into the emotional thought of remembering because we have a tendency to remember what appears to be the struggle. We have a tendency to remember what seems to be a need for pity. But Jesus never needed pity because he came for the reason of going to the cross. He did not need anybody to say, poor Jesus. Look what he had to go through. Because even though he walked in humanity, he was still divinity. And in his divinity, while yet his humanity tried to speak, as he got ready to go to the cross, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. As in the Garden of Gethsemane, his humanity sees the suffering that must take place for him to fulfill redemption's price. His humanity makes a request to the Father. Is there another way? Can this cup be passed from me? But when his humanity speaks, his divinity kicks in. And when his divinity kicks in, his divinity kicked in as if telling humanity to shut up and be quiet. That his divinity says, I, I heard what humanity says, but divinity says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus now, when he literally talks about do this in remembrance of me, he's pointing to the fact that he does not want us to remember the process, but more importantly, remember the purpose. Somebody says, say, not to remember the process, but to remember the purpose. Jesus wants us to remember the purpose of Calvary and not the process of Calvary yes it was quite a scene for him who knew no sin to become sin for you and I it was quite an ordeal for him to take the stripes that was laid upon him and for him to be laid on the rugged cross with spikes in his hands and nails in his feet and to literally have a crown of thorns pushed upon his brow and be pierced in the side by a Roman soldier and to be spat upon and have his clothes gambled for all of these things were quite an ordeal but Jesus says never remember don't worry about the process keep your mind on the purpose and the reason why Jesus wanted us and needs us to remember the purpose because the purpose was established long before Calvary. The purpose literally was established at the deliverance of the children of Israel from Egyptian bondage. They had been in bondage uh, for over 400 years. They were forced to make straw a uh, brick without straw. They was under uh, hard-pressed taskmasters. But when their cry reached the Lord, when they reached the father he sent one by the name of moses and he says go and tell pharaoh i said let my people go and it's at that moment that things are beginning to move and beginning to move but pharaoh's heart was hardened and because Pharaoh's heart was hardened, the father understood, I'm going to harden his heart because I need him to understand that I'm God and he's not. Please don't miss that point. See, there are times in our lives when God wants to have a showdown and he wants to prove that he's God over your situation. There are times when life will try and make you think you need something you don't really need. And God says, I will let that thing fall apart so you can understand you didn't need that anyway. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, this morning, but somebody needs to know in communion by the purpose of Calvary, you'll find out exactly what we needed then and what we still need today. And somebody today that can get excited about all of the things that life has to order, or ha has to offer, that's nothing greater than being grateful for for the, listen, not the process, but the purpose of Calvary. Is there anybody glad that he went to the cross on purpose? That he stayed on the cross on purpose? That he hung, bled, and died just for you and I on purpose? Now, if you understand that, you ought to give him a praise on purpose because you understand that he did it just for you. I'm going to find out who in here got the revelation right now. If you're bold enough and you don't mind declaring that he did it just for you, look at somebody and say, he did it for me. I know he did it for you, but I got to take ownership right here. He did it just for me. As a matter of fact, I got a statement. If it had not been for Jesus, if it had not been for Jesus, if it had not been for Jesus, I would not even be up in here because he, listen, he looked at me, he saw me in my fault, but he looked beyond my fault, saw my need, redeem me, raise me, save me, and right now I got to declare, I thank God for the purpose of Calvary. 
the purpose was seen in the whole timing of the crucifixion the purpose was seen in what was going on because God started this way back when the children of Israel were in, in Egyptian bondage it was while they're in Egyptian bondage he gets ready to have the showdown and after uh, making sure that all of the gods of Egypt have been put on listen on the spot not to be able to measure up to be because he's the only one that's God he decides his final plague that he will go in and send in the spirit of death to literally listen take out the firstborn of every listen every human and the firstborn of the cattle in Israel I mean in, in Egypt and while he's there sending in the messenger of death to take out the firstborn to prove to Pharaoh that he's God it's at that moment he tells the children of Israel to do something he tells them to take a lamb and then have the lamb to be slaughtered and then take the blood from that lamb and put it on the doorpost of their house and he said because when I send destruction to Egypt to wipe out the firstborn when the blood is on the doorpost when the dead angel sees the blood the dead angel will say I can't stop there I gotta pass over that one because the blood is applied somebody needs to know that the blood still works today that wherever the blood of Jesus is applied what comes as destruction got to pass over that because the blood of Jesus covers somebody needs to know that the blood still works uh, yeah yeah the songwriter said it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley it gives me strength not just on Sunday but from day to day to day to day the blood still works and so he tells them this and it is called the Passover and then he gives us instruction that we just read he tells them he says now he says now when I smite uh, uh, Egypt none of this will come near you and he said now you shall remember and commemorate this moment and it shall be a festival in your lineage forever for every generation and from that time on each and every year the people of God will have the feast of Passover but after 40 and two generations they have a Passover like never before and this particular Passover Jesus now sits in an upper room with his disciples and he's there in the upper room with his disciples and now it's at this moment that he calls the attention to the purpose of Calvary not the process of Calvary but the purpose of Calvary not the process of of Calvary but the purpose of Calvary not the process of Calvary but the purpose of Calvary so he says just like we're eating this Passover today Jesus tells his disciples he says this bread is going to be broken as a sign that my body is given for you he says but don't focus on the process look at the purpose he tells them that yes my body will be broken for you but it is a sign that my body will be broken so that you can be set free then he takes the cup and he says now this cup will represent a new covenant in my blood that I'm establishing and he says unto them he said it's a brand new covenant it's it's a brand new moment between God and his people that once and for all he says I am the Passover lamb and he says after all of these years of needing a lamb every year he says after this one you won't need another one oh boy somebody needs to know right there when you have Jesus you have everything that you need when we have Jesus he is our everything he is our everything every day in every season at every point Jesus is all that we need is there anybody can praise the one who is your everything now you can't praise him if he's just your Sunday thing you can't praise him if he's just your every now and then but if you know it's in him you live move and have your being I dare you give him a praise because he is your everything
somebody this morning that understands right now that through Jesus and through his sacrifice and through the blood of Jesus that this is not a ritual this is not something we just do but right now we are identifying with the fact that through Calvary the purpose was fulfilled so when it comes to communion we cannot set and come to church because it's first Sunday I'll be worried about the wafer and the cup because we can't commune with him with bread if we're not willing to commune with him with spirit thank God for, 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 for the early saints you know the early saints took this serious in some ways it turned into religion but we thank God but they were their hearts were right you no, know, the old, the older saints used to say, you know, they used to get a little messed up. Somebody didn't bring it; they couldn't make it to church. Nobody brought me my communion. I call them. Nobody brought me my communion. Can I help us today? This here can't do nothing for us. So if you miss it, don't think that you have lost your salvation. Because it has nothing to do with first Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday, or fourth Sunday. There are some that took it one, listen, we take it in, 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 uh, here once a month on a schedule, but we don't take it on a certain day because sometimes we switch it around. Sometimes it might be Friday, we say we have communion because at the end of the day, it's not about what day of the month it is. It's the purpose of communion. Jesus says, remember the purpose. Someone say the purpose. I'm talking right now. I'm talking about right here, detailed instructions. He gives detailed instructions. So now Paul in our Corinthians writing Right before we get ready to take communion, Paul brings clarity to those in Corinth. If you ever wanted to wonder where we are at the church today in the body of Christ, read Corinthians. You'll find out that in many ways we are an exact picture of what's in Scripture. For the, the, the church at Corinth, they were very gifted. They were the, all the works of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit was in operation. They were always there, ready to move forward. But they had got into some practices. And it's in 1 Corinthians that he first of all deals with the covering. And uh, in 1 Corinthians 11, when he deals with the covering, you know, traditionally this got a little bit off mark because when they're talking about the covering, they're talking about a cultural covering. And in the culture of the early saints and even those in Corinth, they were talking about the covering, a woman being covered. A woman was considered to be covered when she was covered by a husband. When she was covered by a, you know, a husband, the person that was responsible for her because that was vitally important. And so I speak and I thank God for every man in here today that really understand right now that, listen, you're not just, you know, you're not just a, a you know, a, a husband, but you're also a covering. Every man, you've got to know that God says you're the priest of your home that you have the power and to declare what the devil can stop and all we got to do if we walk in obedience as men obeying God we're able to cover our homes effectively can we give God praise for every man in this room so okay first Corinthians 11 it starts with the covering and so so you know the old saints kind of got thrown off with the covering because in the old days you know in the older days you know you have to have your head covered because they say you can't come to church without your head being covered and you definitely could not take communion in the old days without your head being covered okay I know some of y'all this is the, this is the 1030 service so some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about but see if you were there in the old days and you came to communion without your head covered you have to have a chapel cap a chapel veil you have to have a hat on you have to have something on because the old saints say you can't take communion without having your head covered. And let me tell you, if you happen to come and you didn't have nothing, don't worry. The usher will be in the back and she'll have a roll of paper towel to put a piece on your head because the old school said you got to have your head covered in order to take communion. They had the right heart, but they kind of got a little off there. Because watch this. Uh, 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 listen, you can have something on your head, but if you ain't got something in your heart. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we learned better as we went, as we went, as we went. We understood that the covering was actually a cultural thing in the days of the Corinthian church, that a man would literally be the covering of the woman. And so now when he gets there, he's corrected them on all types of matter. But then right after he deals with the covering, he deals with communion. They were having, they were, they were literally taking, and they were actually having, if you will, communion. They were treating communion, you know, ritualistically. They were treating it like a banquet. They were treating it like, oh, this the Sunday we eat. 
They were looking forward to eating. And it's in that particular passage that we find that, you know, that folk were in groups. They had little sections and there had some people that had plenty and some had a little because there was no table already set. Everybody brought whatever they were going to have for communion. They brought it from their own house. And those that had nothing to uh, not have much to bring, they brought a little. But those that had a whole lot, they brought a whole lot. And it got so bad in the Corinthian church until they stopped waiting for each other. They start saying, day late, we ain't worrying about them, we're going to have our communion, and we're going to have us a good time. And so much, it became competitive. It became a strain because all one wanted to do is say, today is my communion, I'm going to get me some communion. And Paul now hears of this, and he writes a letter to them. And when Paul writes the letter to them, he picks up by saying, he says, I am giving unto you that which I received from the Lord. That the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. He says, do this in remembrance of me. He said, Jesus says, remember me at communion. Don't try to focus on the process of communion, but the purpose of communion. Just like the process of Calvary was the process, but the purpose was bigger than the process. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. He said, whenever you drink it, he says, drink it in remembrance of me. He says, for I have received from the Lord that which I pass unto you. And he goes on to say this. He says, and when they're given thanks, and he says, uh, and then after the same manner, when he had taken the bread and says, you know, you show forth my debt and proclaim my debt until I return. He goes on and he says this. He says, so then, Whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning. I need to read that again. He says, so then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Paul says this that the table cannot be played with it cannot be taken you know haphazardly I'm gonna take communion he says because if we do so and don't consider how serious it is he said we will be found guilty of sin against the Lord table now sin comes in all types of forms in all types of fashions but certainly I just believe none of us want to be guilty of sinning against the Lord's table because he said that we ought not just eat of the bread and drink of the cup will be uh, and, and do it in an unworthy manner what are you talking about in an unworthy manner singing against the Lord's table he says this is the only way we can really commune he says this in verse 20 verse 28 he says everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup someone say examine ourselves he literally puts this right where it belongs because oftentimes we are worried about what other folk think we can't be so trying to impress other folk when we're not even examining ourselves because sometimes we can be overwhelmed with what folks think because we already know we're not even examining ourselves. Because if we examine ourselves, it's our position then to say, Father, it's not my mother or my father, it's not my sister or my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, that stand in the need of prayer. Anybody in here that, that, that understand, listen, at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> what other folk have to say really it's not as big of a detail a big of a deal as what God has to say about us and if I want anybody to say you know what's real I need him to see my heart as being real you need him to see your heart as being real and he says part of it is this table has so much power until even if you miss the mark don't go to the table or eat the bread and drink of the cup like nothing's been going on when you know for yourself. 
He ain't talking about nobody else throwing you under the bus because at the end of the day, every tub got to set on its own bottom. Okay, nobody point their finger at you because this is how pointing fingers work. Every time you point one finger, three is still pointing back. But at the end of the day, when it comes to communion, he said, examine yourself. Because so, when we examine ourselves, it is not for us to see perfection. Because none of us deserve nothing God offers. But we are so glad he doesn't give us what we deserve, but he gives us what we need. Is there anybody glad that God didn't give us what we deserve, but he gives us what we need? Because we deserve penalty, but he gives us blessings. We deserve, watch this, the consequence, but he gives us deliverance. And somebody today that realized right now that God has given you not what you deserve, but what he wanted you to have, that's a good place right there to give God praise because you realize he's been better to you than you really deserve. Oh, is there anybody here that realized right now that God literally, listen, has given you another chance when man would have wrote you off a long time ago man would have said i ain't trusting you again i ain't messing with you no more i'm condemning you forever but i'm so glad whenever the father sees he remembers the purpose and you know what the father sees the redeemed ass when he looks at those that, re that are redeemed when he looks at you and i he doesn't see a black suit with a white shirt he doesn't see a blouse or a dress. What he sees is the blood of Jesus. And whenever he looks down at you, he sees the blood of Jesus. And that blood that Jesus shed on Calvary, the songwriter said, it reaches the highest mountain. It flows through the lowest valley. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day to day today and guess what it never ever ever loses its power is there anybody right now thankful for the blood i dare you give god praise because you are grateful for the blood he says let a man examine himself he says for whoever eats of the lord's table in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. He said, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat or drink without discerning the lost body will drink judgment upon themselves. God literally says this, okay? It's not what nobody else can do to you and I. It's what we cause ourselves. I'm so glad that man don't have the final say over me. Anybody glad that man don't have the final say over you? Anybody glad that man doesn't have the final say over you? That's a good reason for you to tell him thank you again right there. Now, uh -huh. he says this. He says this. He says, watch this. He says, we will drink judgment on ourselves. Simply mean this. When it comes to communion, nobody knows you, nobody knows me, nobody knows us like we know ourselves. That's why he said, let a man examine himself. Look at the power of this, because it's so powerful, y'all, I'm about done. This is so powerful, he says, for this reason, he says, that's why many among you are weak. He's talking to the Corinthians. Some are sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep he talked about weakness leading to sickness and sickness leading to death he said weakness leads to sickness and sickness leads to death allowing us to see if we take for granted communion we can find ourselves being spiritually weak if we're not if we're spiritually weak we will wind up being spiritually sick and once you're spiritually sick, a matter of time, you'll be spiritually dead. He's speaking physically, but he's now identifying it spiritually. That spiritual weakness starts by playing with the table. When we're serious about the table, 
the table can make us get out of our foolishness and cause us to walk in strength please don't get this twisted today none of us are that good that we can pat ourselves on the back it's only by the grace of God that any of us are who we are none of us can act like and walk around with a with a, with a mindset as if we got a stick on our forehead to say I've done everything right but what God has done is given us an opportunity in a way to be able to walk in line with him how marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul he looked beyond my faults and he saw my every need is there anybody today that glad that God is the God of another chance but he said if we treat this table as a ritual and know that we have not discerned ourselves and examine ourselves but come to communion like ain't nothing going on when we know we ain't doing right he says now you're going to usher in spiritual weakness and then from that point you're going to bind up with spiritual sickness you know how sickness works right sickness untreated leads from one condition to another whatever we don't let God treat it ain't going to get better it's going to get worse Whatever we don't let God handle, it doesn't get better, it gets worse. That's good news today. That's gospel news today. That's good news, y'all. That I don't care where any of us are in life, in struggle, in challenge, today is a good day for that thing to be over. Today is a good day for your brand new life to start. Because if we don't and we think we can do the same thing and don't discern the Lord's body, See, that's the power of communion. Because see, the power of communion will make, you know, let me, let me give something else. See, the old saints, you know, while they, yes, they, they, they didn't play with the table now. Come on now. You know, they didn't play with the table. Had a little, had a little, had a little bit of challenge in it. The challenge is, but, you know, you don't do it this week because you got to take communion tomorrow. But next Saturday, going to be all right. No, no, no. Communion with the table maybe once a month. But communion with God is every day. Am I communicating? I need to say that again. Communion with the table may be once a month. But communion with God is every day. Honoring his, watch this, his purpose collectively may happen once a month. But honoring his purpose every day is a personal thing. Okay. In other words, whatever the struggle, whatever the challenge, whatever the thing that's been trying to beat you up, wear you down, take you out, you can get that thing off your back today and it can start by communing with it. When you commune and you drink, listen, and you receive the body and blood of the Lord, you can say, today I'm taking communion that this is not going to be in my life no more. Okay. This is how it works in communion. You confess it, you release it, you take the communion and you say right now Calvary has handled this thing once and for all and I ain't walking like that no more Calvary has handled this once and for all I'm not going to let the devil beat me down like this any longer but I'm going to walk in a new attitude focus and appreciation for the power of God what awesome listen opportunity we have because sometimes sin can become, listen y'all, sometimes doing our own thing, okay, which leads to anything outside of God's will is sin, can be some, so comfortable. If you don't have a moment like this, you would think it's normal life. Y'all, if we don't have a moment like this, we would think it's okay. Especially in the day and time we live in. Because we live in a time right now where it seems like to be a believer, you got to wild in the dirt to match everybody else. But I come against that today, that listen, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, all things are passed away, behold, all things become brand new. Some of you believe that today, give God praise, because that's, that's newness on the inside of you. Come on, that's newness on the inside of you. And I want to speak to somebody that messed up more times than you can count. Don't think that this message is a message of perfection. This message is a message of understanding that God can take a jacked up life change that thing around and you're gonna be better than you ever been before and right now you about to see about 20 to 30 people in this service that ain't ashamed of, 
of the fact they haven't always been who they are right now don't mind standing up giving God praise to let somebody know what you're looking at is not perfection but you're looking at a transition come on come on come on he's shifting me 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 listen you, you got to understand right now y'all hear my heart 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 I got an announcement to make that God said even over this house that listen stop expecting this house to be a normal place because God don't want normal he wants those that will go uncommon that were willing to walk away from the traditions of men walk away from the same old same old and say God I wanted to sell out for you I'm gonna live for you I'll stand for you if I gotta stand by myself if folks think that they look at me and say oh you think you all of that I'm not all of that but greater is he on the inside sign of me that he that is in the world now if you are ready to go where God wants to take you give God praise right now to let him know God you can use me you can have me right now I'm broken I'm jacked up but in you I am sufficient <laughs> nevertheless last verse when we are judged in this way meaning when communion comes to say hey check yourself hey cut out the foolishness hey make up your mind who you're gonna live for that's this y'all that's the power of communion someone say the power I don't care what position or title we hold in in ministry what role we sit on how we serve how, would I, how we give, none of that qualifies us. Because at the end of the day, when he comes to this table, we got to check ourselves and let the spiritual mirror say, change that. Spiritual mirror say, change that. Come on, y'all. Don't act like you don't know what the mirror is for. You got it one before you left out this morning. You try to make sure the hair was right. You try to make sure, ladies, the makeup was right. Brothers, you try to make sure that everything was laid down right because you looked in the mirror. And the Bible says this. Paul says we, we, we like folk that look in a mirror. And if we're not careful, we walk off. We forget what manner of men we are. Because it's important for us to understand that the word of God is just that. It is a mirror so we can see ourselves. And here's the tragedy. It's not what you see. I don't care how bad you see what, what you how, how, how bad it is when you look at yourself or look at your life or look at your situation it's the only thing that's bad if we don't change and communion is about that it's about entering into the next zone of saying I'm leaving the foolishness behind and I'm walking in him nevertheless when we are judged in this way by the Lord we are being disciplined so that listen we will not be finally condemned with the world y'all he's real he ain't playing games and the day of reckoning is sure to come and this is not to scare us or to push us but it's to make us aware that we can say thank you for the purpose because every time we take communion and do this in remembrance of me, we realize that the Passover lamb was once and final he wants us to remember the origin which is the Passover remember the objective to bring judgment on that which is not his will in us remember the outcome to sustain us in the midst of destruction and then remember the obligation to carry this out as a continuation forever acknowledging Jesus as the true and final Passover and we're careful listen we're, we're careful uh, we, we are not we must be careful to never forget who we are we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and where we are according to Ephesians 2 and 6 we're made to sit in heavenly places finally we must acknowledge God's covenant promises concerning us through communion his promise to deliver his promise to provide, his promise to protect, and his promise to avenge. I pray today that as we're getting ready for communion, that all hearts are ready. Everybody's standing. 
Get your communion elements in your hand today as we get ready to commune. Always remember Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Always remember. Not just on first Sunday, y'all, every day. Jesus, Jesus, everywhere you go, every day, always keep him on your mind. Can we all say it together? Say it with me. Always remember, call his name. Jesus, Jesus, always remember Jesus, Jesus, always. Turn virtually. Come on, get your elements in your hands. Say it together. Always remember Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Lift it up. Always remember Jesus. Always keep him, always keep him on your He says that before we eat of the bread or drink of the cup, let every person examine themselves. Take a moment right now and pray yourself, asking God to forgive of sin, to prepare you for communion, and make a commitment to him of how you're going to go forward and be notice you're not talking to man if you make a commitment to God stick to it and watch God give you the strength to make it through if you stick with him go ahead right now and pray self-examination Father, now we thank you today for this moment, Father, of remembering the purpose of Calvary. Lord, the process was gruesome, but the purpose prevails. We thank you today for setting us free through the obedience of your own Son, Jesus, our Christ. And Father, today, we are humbled and we're grateful for the privilege of being reminded that salvation is free, but Father, it came at a great expense. And for that, we want to say thank you. Now, Lord, today we thank you for this bread element and this cup that's before us on today, that it serves, dear God, a purpose of how Jesus was given for us in body that he had to submit his body to the authorities that he would be crucified, given as a ransom for us. And for that, we want to say thank you. As we think and consider this cup that's before us, we are reminded that you established a brand new covenant as Jesus in his obedience allowed them to nail him to the cross. 
And as the soldier pierced him in the side, their water for purification and blood for sanctification came streaming down. And we thank you, Father, that even this morning afresh, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stain. And Father, the dying thief even rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there are we, though vile as he, wash all our sins away. We thank you right now that our sins have been washed away. And on today, we salute the purpose of Calvary to cleanse us from all sin. Sin of omission, sin of commission, sins of past, sins of presence, and even now, sins of future. We thank you, Father. And we bless you today that as we commune, we don't do it in ritual, but, oh God, we do it, Father, intentional with a heart committed that you are God. You loved us so. You thought we was worth it, so you sent your son to die on the cross for us. We love you, Father, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, with the bread lifted. Amen. Hallelujah. What a price. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, lift the bread. Let's hold it there. Ah, he paid it just for you. Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. Anybody glad today? He was in white as snow. You can sing it for yourself. Come on, Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He was, hallelujah, in white as snow. Oh, Jesus paid it. Oh, anybody glad about it? Sing all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. Oh, but he won. Think about it. Say it again. He won. <laughs> yes, he took the bread he blessed it he said this is my body broken for you given for you and he says because you understand the purpose he blessed it and broke it as he gives to us afresh he says now nah, eat ye all of it oh god if you're grateful express yourself right now express yourself to him right now that's how you take communion. That's how you partake of communion. You express yourself in the process. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 After supper, after eating of the bread, the Bible says he then in like manner took the cup. And when he took the cup, he said this cup is a new covenant in my blood you got to understand that covenants in biblical days you could not have a covenant without some blood 
covenant was not just a speech it was not just a talk but something had to bleed for covenant to be established but the bible says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin in other words watch this money couldn't buy salvation riches could not buy salvation the only thing that could pay the price <laughs> was the blood of jesus yes and he said unto those believers then he says i want you to know that this covenant that i'm establishing he says next year for passover you won't need a new lamb because i'm the last lamb he said you won't need a new move because i'm the last move you won't need another savior because i'm the only savior you won't need somebody to do something all over again because i'm fixing it once and for all this time somebody ought to be glad that listen that over two thousand years ago he fixed it before your mama and your daddy knew they were going to bring a boy or a girl he already fixed it way back on calvary and somebody this morning that's grateful for the fact that god prepared you and he prepared your salvation before your life was even in to flourish somebody ought to tell god thank you he said i made a covenant that your sin will not condemn you that your sin for every sin i give you a way to escape i give you an opportunity to repent and he said even when you sin if you confess your sin i'm faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you of all unrighteousness he said my blood is so powerful until it takes your sin puts it in a sea of forgetfulness and it can't come back later to condemn your just cause somebody ought to tell God thank you today this is what communion is all about it's about understanding the purpose you've got to know without a doubt he had you in mind he said this is a covenant he said a covenant cannot be broken because it's established in blood a covenant cannot be changed because it's established in blood you know what that means this is not a sin to mess up this is not a sin listen you can't take we can't take god's grace for granted just because he's already made a way does not mean we can go and ball out and then say well he gonna forgive me anyway no once we get that attitude we cancel the grace but when we understand that god is real it's good news to know that your worst day did not stop god from loving you your worst act did not make god cancel you your worst situation did not make God write you off, but he's a God of another chance. And it's all because of the covenant. And he says, now, this is my covenant. He says, that often as you drink it, he said, you show forth my death till I return. In other words, when sin, when the devil tries to tell you what you can't be, you got to remind him about the power of the blood. When the devil tries to tell you what you can't do, you got to let him know that the blood says I can. When the devil tries to tell you how you ain't going to make it, you got to look back at the devil and say, by the blood of Jesus, I rebuke you and I take my authority. And he's given to his disciples and he gave to us and he says, now drink ye all of it. Now, you got to express yourself because you just took part in the covenant. Hallelujah. Right there, I'll be right there. The songwriter said, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. How did you make it? I know it was the blood. today I know it was the blood <laughs> I know it was the blood for me I haven't always been where I am one day I was lost I found out he died on the cross and I know it was the blood for They crucified my Lord They crucified my Lord For me If that's you out there You give him praise right there 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 And shout one day I was long But I realized he died On the cross I'll tell you what I know now I know it was the blood for me he could have said father they did it father they messed up father send angels 
and deliver me. But while they were crucifying him, while they were mocking him, while they were nailing him to the cross, he never said a mumbling word. God Almighty. He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word for me. Anybody glad that one day you was lost? lost we were lost Jesus died on the cross and I know it was the blood for me guess what y'all it didn't in that Calvary it didn't in that Calvary look at somebody say it didn't in that Calvary look at somebody say it didn't in that Calvary every day you got to live saying there is power Working power in the blood <laughs> of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, hey, power, wonder working power. Guess where it is? In the Yourself. There is power, power, wonder, working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. I don't know who this for, God. I got to sing this part. There is healing, healing, supernatural healing in the blood. <laughs> yes, oh. To know in your door, there is healing, healing, supernatural healing in the precious blood. Of I am free, praise the Lord. I'm free. Where the free folk at? No longer bow. <laughs> It's just a blessing. Come on, if you reach that cabaret, throw your hand up, throw your head back and shout, Praise the Lord! takes a chill pill. My will, my mind, and my emotions. It chills. It rests in God. My soul is resting. How can you be calm under pressure? My soul is resting. How can you hold it together when life is falling apart? My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Everybody, come on, lift your hands and say it. Come on, let's do it together. Let's sing it together. Pray. Sing. 
word to God. This is what it feels like to commune with him. And it's not locked to Sunday. But at any time you can get you a bread and get you some juice and think about Calvary and the purpose of it. And you can have communion at your own house whenever you get ready to. And experience this same power of elevation and strength in your spirit man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. Come, Za. I know you took your communion already. But as you received communion on today, you received the importation of the fullness of what you confessed. You confess Jesus Christ as Lord over your life. And the eating of the bread and the drinking of the cup was a sign and a symbol that you understand that just like all of us in this room that we could not do this for ourselves but Jesus loved you so much till he went to, to the cross on purpose that you I your parents your grandparents everybody connected to you that believe Jesus walk in eternal life so today is your first communion as it relate to with the body of Christ the church but from now on you walk in the liberty of being a child of God saved 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 bless you God. come on let's give God praise today hallelujah y'all there's a sweet spirit in this place I know it's the presence of the Lord Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. Yeah, take your seats if you can. Ah, yes. Every head bow, every eye closed. If you're sharing with us virtually, every head bow, every eye closed. If you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, I want you to know you're in the right place at the right time. If you never, if you accepted Jesus Christ, but then you find yourself doing your own thing, going your own way, don't let people stop you and don't think it all, it's automatic where well, I talk to the Lord. No, sometimes you got to make a bold move to let the devil know, I ain't playing. I'm going with God all the way. If that's you today, you straight away from the Lord, but you are returning to him today. Not for an act of man, but an act of obedience because you want him. And then last but not least, you want to be a part of this family if you don't have a spiritual church home. Maybe you've been visiting here for a while and you've never ever decided but right now the spirit of the Lord telling you this is the place you need to call home when you're with your heavenly home we thank God for you and we believe for you right now and those seven virtually any one of those three invitations to be saved to rededicate your life or make this place your church home there's a message coming on the screen send us a text and we will be there with you to help you everyone praying repeating after me heavenly father thank you for loving me and today I accept and I embrace the promise of salvation in your word create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me Lord I promise to serve and follow you for the rest of my life thank you Jesus and I know that I am saved I'm saved in Jesus name Amen. Well, I hear the bottom eyes are closed in person right now. If you're here, you never accepted Jesus, and today you're accepting him for the first time, making him the Lord of your life. There's no looking around. It's really between you and God. All I want you to do now is just give us a signal by raising your hand and say, pray for me, Pastor, because today I'm accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, and I've never done that before. Today is the very first time I'm making him my Lord and my Savior. Slip your hand up real high if that's you. I don't want to miss you today. Amen. Most importantly, the heaven is going see you amen when heaven sees you heaven is releasing in your direction the strength that you need amen secondly you here today and you that person you strayed away from the Lord doing your own thing your own way but today you are rededicating your heart to the Lord if that's you slip your hand up say pray for me today pastor today I'm sick and tired of going my way doing it my way I'm going with you all the way if that's you today slip your hand up say pray for me pastor 
Amen. No matter where you are in this service. Amen. Then last but not least, if you're here today and you once had a, amen, you had a, a, a church home, but you don't have one now, or the Spirit of the Lord just told you that this is the place where you need to grow and develop in the ways of the Lord and the work of the Lord. If that's you, slip your hand up and say, yes, today, Pastor, I want to become a part of this spiritual family. Raise your hand real high. Any one of those three invitations, is there one today? Is there one? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we bless you and we thank you today that you're the Lord of the harvest and because of you, none of the harvest is ever lost. Lord, we don't doubt anything. We believe you by your power that every person that you move upon their heart, they will respond to you. So be glorified now is our request in Jesus' name. Amen. Can somebody give God praise right there? Amen. Thank you, ministers and elders. Amen. It's ours to extend. It's everybody's individual to accept. I want to right now ask her because I gave a commission on last week, an instruction. Did anybody bring somebody with you for the first time today? If that's you, amen, stand and, and have the person that came with you to stand. We're not going to put you on the spot. not going to make you say nothing. Anybody have any first time uh, person with you today, wherever you are, let me know. God bless you. Amen. Let's give God praise for them. Someone else today. Amen. Is there any else? We want you to know why you remain standing for just a second. We want you to know that we're so excited to have you share with us today. And prayerfully, you were able to receive clearly uh, through the uh, power of God. And we pray that you will be back with us real soon. Amen. If you don't have a family, we pray that, you know, God will let, let you see our hearts. Because we've been praying that God will connect us with people that will be ready to go forward and build his kingdom. And so we want you to know on behalf of Lady God, myself, the entire MCI family, that we salute and we thank God for you today. Let's thank God for our first timers. Amen. Amen. Well, amen, but right before we get into the offering right now, we want to thank God, amen, for any, uh, of course, birthdays celebrated on this week. If you celebrated a birthday on this week, amen, we want you to stand right now, right you are. We want to salute you or that any birthdays in this service today. God bless it. With us. Sister Darlene, I'm about to give you a birthday shout. You're doing your duty. I know you're, you're handling your work. Amen. Is there, is there anybody in this service today? Anybody in the service? Well, listen, y'all, there's nobody in this service, but there is somebody tuned into this service. Amen. Look, y'all, the senior mother, the oldest mother in our church, she celebrated a birthday on this week, and we want to celebrate her. She's watching this morning on YouTube. Let's thank God for Mother Eliza Julian. Y'all, this past Monday, she is 103 years young. Let's give God praise. Happy birthday, Mother Julian. We salute you. We love you. We thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for you and we salute and we thank God for your birthday. Amen. Listen, y'all. She's every bit as sharp as a 40 or 50 year old at 103 years old. Amen. Got a chance to talk to her about two weeks ago and she just mesmerized Lady Gullage and I just sitting there talking to her because she's got that kind of grace on her life. So again, happy birthday, Mother Julian. We honor and we thank God for you. Amen. Wedding anniversaries. Any couple celebrate a wedding anniversary this week, we want to thank God for you if you're here today if you're here today amen any couples celebrate a wedding anniversary this week amen well amen we thank god for all coming coming to couples and we give god praise well we're giving god praise this time you know why because it's time for us to honor god and give it let's give god praise right there amen on this day please know god is real everything that we have it comes from him we honor him with a tithe like Abraham did. Abraham, Abraham decided to honor the Lord with a tithe. Not because God made him, but because he decided to. God promised to bless him and through Abraham, all this, every generation will be blessed. You want to walk into the blessings of the Lord? And the blessings of the Lord is more than material things. The blessings of the Lord is a spirit of contentment and whatever your choices are, the wisdom and the power of God are going to, is going to enable you to be successful. It starts with making up our mind that we're going to honor the Lord. Amen. Honoring the Lord is not based on our terms, but it's based on what's established. The tithe is not the ceiling where our giving ends. It's actually the floor where our giving begins. The least that we can do is tithe. A tithe means tenth. Everyone say tenth. I mean the tenth of our income. We honor the Lord with that. You're not giving it to a building. You're not giving it to the man. You're giving it to the work of God. And as we are faithful to God, God is certainly faithful to us. 
after the tithe you give a liberal offering for the liberal soul shall be made fat the Bible says that God gives seed to sowers and he takes and multiply the seed as you sow it so today be extravagant concerning God if you're gonna be extravagant about anything don't be extravagant about the mall if you're not gonna be extravagant about God don't be extravagant about sports if we're not gonna be extravagant about God because we have a tendency to be extravagant about everything else and act like we shouldn't be extravagant about God I believe that God deserves our best anybody agree with me today anybody agree with me God deserves our best let's allow our giving to match our mouth and Lord we love you and we love you more than anything so let's pray father we thank you today as we get ready to give we give intentionally father acknowledging that all that we have comes from you I pray for every time that no person will leave here today operating in the flesh worried about this that or the other and not trusting you I pray a spirit of confidence in your word over every person under the sound of my voice and we will bring the tithe and then give a liberal offering and we give you thanks right now for the privilege and the opportunity to honor you in giving in Jesus name amen let's get ready to give lift your gifts with me let's make our confession of faith repeat it for me father I thank you for this opportunity and so good seed into good soil I know I will not suffer because of my obedience for I am blessed according to your word I set my affections on your house and your work I am confident that you have made all grace to abound towards me and I always have all sufficiency in all things and I abound to every good work I believe your word is already done in my life in Jesus name amen I'm sorry as the offers come your way so see you and be blessed
Well, hello and welcome to this week's edition of Good Day MCI. I'm Devron Wilson. My good friend and co-host Carol Smith is out on assignment. MCI, can you believe it's already the month of March? <laughs> Where's the time gone? But you know the old saying goes, time flies when you're having fun. And we've been having a blast here at Good Day MCI. And we've got a lot happening here in the ministry in the month of March. Take a look. We're so excited as we anticipate the masses for Youth Registration Day for all ages. It will take place on Sunday, March 13th after the 1030 a.m. worship experience. We are re-engaging our youth to advance the kingdom for ages to come. Parents, please make every effort to sign your youth up and assist with getting them involved. Partner Sunday, March 26th, is declared as Intentional Honor Sunday as we honor our apostle and senior pastor of 21 years of leadership. Each Sunday in March, there will be an Intentional Honor moment of expression as we move toward the special day with excitement. Remember, honor has a reward installed inside of it, reserved for us as we practice it. Let's pay homage to our apostle. MCI, here's a friendly reminder that Word Up Wednesday Bible study is a midweek time of refueling our spirits with the Word of God. Make Word Up Wednesdays your weekly fuel stops at 12 noon and or 7 o'clock p.m. Family, stop by our very own in-house cafe, Nehemiah Cup, to refresh your natural man before or after services without having to go anywhere else. The cafe is open on Sundays at 7 o'clock a.m. between services and 45 minutes after the 10.30 a.m. service. Stop by the cafe this Sunday. Attending Sunday school is a great way to strengthen your knowledge of biblical doctrine and understanding here at MCI. Sunday school is offered weekly in person on Sundays at 9.15 a.m. and Monday evenings virtually at 6.30 p.m. Join one of these exciting classes for biblical enrichment. Attention family, as you are filling out your unified offering envelopes, we ask that you please print legibly so that we may properly log and document your seeds to your member profile in our giving system. Hey, have you heard the latest news at MCI? To stay abreast of all things MCI, please take out your phones right now and text the word Mount Calvary to the number 54244 to sign up for Text Blast so that you can stay connected. Thank you in advance for being a part of our mobile community. Well, now you're all caught up and in the know. Save the date, set your reminders, and meet the family right here for all of our monthly scheduled events. For any additional news and or updates, check out our website and all of our social media outlets. On behalf of Apostle Terry Gulledge, elect Lady Cassandra Gulledge, and all of us here at Good Day MCI, enjoy the remainder of your day, and let's make it a great one. Amen, amen, praise God. Let us adhere to our announcements. Amen. The month of March has been set aside for Mount Calvary partners to intentionally honor our Apostle Terry and elect Lady Cassandra Gulledge as we celebrate 21 years of effective pastoral leadership. Come on, we can do better than that. 21 years of effective pastoral leadership where lives have been changed and demonstrations have been performed. Amen. In the Bible, the number 21 is a symbol of perfection and maturity it symbolizes divine wisdom and we want to honor the man and woman of God in their divine wisdom the entire month of March with a highlighted service on March 26 at our 8 o'clock and 1030 services if you are led to give today you can do so as our deacons are getting in place the Bible declares to let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor it goes on to say especially somebody say especially especially those who labor and the word and doctrine and truly we understand and know that our servers labor in the word and doctor if you're given by text today we ask that you please type the word honor behind your gift for example if you're giving twenty dollars you'll do twenty and honor 30 and honor whatever the Lord lays on your heart amen you can also give by givelify amen let us adhere to our announcements all right everybody you just stand on your feet now amen as we get ready to now and those that are coming we you can uh, feel free to come but we're standing now because today we honor the Lord. So look at somebody and say, always remember Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. May the one living Savior that died for us all keep you till we all meet again at the appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. Yes, Lord. 
There are several yeah, yeah, ways yeah, you can yeah, 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 yeah. Our church is located at 1600 Westwood Drive, Marrero, Louisiana, 772. Our contact number is 504-340-7777. For emergencies, you can call 504-919-8051. Email us at admin at mciworshipcenter.org. You can also follow us on social media. Our website is www.mciworshipcenter.org. We're on both Facebook and YouTube at Mount Calvary International. Thank you for worshiping with us. Have a great week. Stay encouraged and be blessed.